everybody welcome back to my channel i'm lauren e boone if you are a new subscriber here thank you and if this is your very very first time if you stay a while if you can and if you feel strengthened encouraged or challenged by what you hear today then subscribe to our channel comment below like and right. so this is episode one of a new series a four-part series that i am going to do with my mother glenda boone Hi. <laughs> who i call mom uh, and we are talking about our journey healing together. Um, I think our whys for this is similar. So we share a similar situation that brought us to this moment. But I think individually we both um, had things that we had to heal from. And we decided to do it together. So in this world of cancel culture, uh, we decided to do something different. And to travel along this journey together so thanks mom you're welcome um so yeah in this first episode we'll be talking about our whys um who we are a little bit and something that has helped us um navigate our mother-daughter relationship into adulthood so without further ado this is our journey <laughs> we're healing together our journey. <laughs> we're healing together like to say anything or introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Glenda Boone, Lauren's mom. And like Lauren said, we um, are entering into this journey because we sh shared a certain situation, a familiar family situation, and that brought light to um, some things that, you know, we needed to check on. We need to check ourselves on, we needed to check each other on, and we need to learn um, some things about each other and how we navigate um, as an adult mother-daughter relationship. And so as we entered into this journey, my why is because I realized that um, it's a lot of things that I was taught as a child through generations um, that just is no longer anymore. It's a new generation, it's a new time, and I needed to understand um, what my daughter at this time, in this generation needs. And so I found that quite interesting. It benefited me a lot. It strengthened me a lot. And I thought it would be helpful to other mothers who are, who are navigating, trying to navigate through this space at this time. Yeah, that's a good why. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think my why is, because to me, family is the first ministry we ever, um, you know, encountered. And so if that, familiar relationship isn't strong or it, it's weak, then it's really not a good foundation, you know, to be encouraging others or to, you know, it's a testimony in itself. And so I wanted to be able to share what we did together um, as a way to, you know, inspire us to continue to grow yes. with one another because I couldn't imagine a life with without my family. And so, yes, things hurt. Yes, things happen. But if we talk through it and if we you know, communicate, you know, I feel like we'll be better and stronger moving forward. And so that's my why is because I want to be encouraged with my family um, and not just by. So <laughs> that's my why. So my, you brought up encouraging. And I think also my why too, you don't know this, but we had a conversation, many of our conversations as an adult a woman or her adult child about things that, um, really helped me understand some of the some of the whys of our family like you know you know why why weren't you you know as present as i would have liked you to be, have been as a child but it was because you had your you had things that you had to do that a child couldn't comprehend at that time or you know it wasn't my responsibility it was yours and you had not only me another child and husband and so and a business and so there were things that you had committed yourself to that was going to benefit the entire family. And that was something that I, I didn't see. And I heard your testimony that could help other women, other women as well. And so I think a lot of families, especially black families, can can learn something from just having a talk with their daughter, just simply having the courage enough to tell them things that they thought they would never share with their child. Yes. You know? Yes. Because it helps you understand as a child, it helps you understand so much more about the decisions that were made yeah. and about, you know, your childhood. Yeah, and a lot of that is shame mm. because we want so much more for our daughters. And you carry a lot of um 
and you know that your daughters look up to you, so you don't, you know that you're a role model, and you, yeah. you know, a lot of black mothers, we wear a lot of masks. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we go through, it's okay, it's okay. And what I found is that we just keep stuffing stuff down, yeah. down, down. Impressing stuff. Yeah, and, um, you know, so, so, it's important, you know, it's important. It's, I'm not going to lie to you, I, I'm not one to want to put all my stuff out there to the world, yeah. but... Yeah. I also know that this is a, this is another form of my healing mm -hmm. um, and therapeutic for me. And I pray that it will be healing and therapeutic to other women who are in my situation because it is not easy. A lot of times we carry a lot of guilt and we carry a lot of shame when our adult children come to us and they share with us in their own way, mm -hmm. whether, you know, whether it's good, whether it's bad, but they share to us their experience. It's very hurtful, and um, so I hope that through this series, by the time we get to the end, that they will see light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you brought that up because I think it's a difference, well, there is a difference between shame and accountability, yes. and I think as adult children, sometimes we fall into that, that tunnel of like, I'm just, you don't think it's shame, but you're shaming your parents for the decisions that they had to make or, or the actions that they took in your childhood where it should be, I'm going to hold you accountable. I'm going to tell you how I feel because I have to tell you this. Right. Because if not, it's going to be passive aggressive. It's, it's going to come out in ways that's destructive in other relationships. And so I have to do this for me. And I hope that you will be you know, accepting of that, even though it hurts to hear. Um, it's, it's a way that you have to communicate it. And I think that's something that we kind of started yeah. like the ball, yeah. get the ball yeah. going. Yeah, yeah. And it, but it was so much needed. Yeah. You know, the, the conversation is tough. I'm not going to tell you, you know, because as a parent, you're like, I can't believe you sitting up here <laughs> telling me this. All that I sacrificed to make sure you had clothes on your back, you could go to school, you had cars to drive, you were not in the street, you wouldn't sit in a shelter, and then you're going to tell me some stuff like this? I wasn't at a softball game when you were seven? <laughs> You know, so, so. But that mattered. But that, that mattered. mattered. And what that I mattered. learned was it wasn't my experience. It was I had to be open to hearing their experience, what they experienced as a result of. And then I had to be transparent enough to say, okay, wait a minute. And, 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 and also speak on my behalf. Okay, mm -hmm. yes, that happened. But at the same time, I need you to be open to understanding my why. Yes. Why I had to do that. And I think that conversation that we had in that Starbucks in Target. <laughs> Y'all, it was a, I don't, this was Storming. a divine yeah. moment. I think this was, to this day, that was a divine moment. We were getting, it was around the holidays, yeah. I think. I think it was 2018. Yeah. And this is when the shift in our family had began. And we didn't even, I didn't check the weather. We didn't know. We just ran to Target for something. And it started pouring, thundering, lightning. And we just said, you know what? Let's just sit down in this Starbucks and talk. Because it was some tension there. And we had maybe a two-hour conversation. Yeah, yeah. The Starbucks was closing. It was like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> but we sat there. And I think yeah. that was the breakthrough conversation yeah. that we both needed. And it kind of, it, I felt like a woman after yeah. that conversation. Yeah. Because yeah. I was like, I had, first of all, I had the guts <laughs> to tell my mama how I felt. Yeah. Because that wasn't no easy feat. Right. And you were... I thought you would be more defensive than you were, and you weren't. And you were very, I mean, it was a few things. She was like, what? Like, like you said, like, you telling me? But you also were open, and you communicated to me things that I never knew. Right. And you shared with me things that um, hurt you that we did that I was unconscious of. So right. I, I apologize for that. And, yeah, like I said, I think that started, that was our breakthrough conversation yeah. right there. Yeah, I think, and it, it is, it's, it's very difficult, but it's, once you get through it, I think the best word I can explain it is fear. Fear that you don't want to hurt. Like, I don't think when you're in, the, the child doesn't want to hurt their parent by yes. telling them that. Yes. And then on our end, we don't want to, our children have a different perception mm -hmm. of us um, because, you know, we, they do put us up here. And it's a very high bar, you know? It's a very high bar. So I was like, I just want to be free from all of this. Like, mm -hmm. I am not perfect. Now, you a grown woman, and you tell me how you felt as a child. Now, 
you a grown woman now, so now I can tell you and talk to you like a grown woman. Mm -hmm. And I think we as parents have got to be strong enough to and to have that conversation with our adult children and, and to be transparent, as hard as it may be, because at the end of the day, it will break, make things clearer. Mm -hmm. It makes mm -hmm. things clearer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I don't think, well, I, I wasn't really hit to like the word boundary and what that looked like in families, because as far as I'm concerned, you said it, I would do it, that's my mom or whatever, or, you know, just always available or, I don't know, or just always, because we were so, we're so close. Yeah. Our family unit is like this. Yeah. And so, you know, we didn't know, especially me as a child, I didn't know boundaries. I'm like, what you mean? That's my mom. That's my, you know, that's my daddy. What you mean boundaries? So like, in that moment, that conversation, we developed our code word. Yeah, we developed <laughs> I didn't even know what code word was. But yeah. Lauren shared that with me because I did not know. I've learned so much um, through this process. And I know we'll talk about it further down the road. But... I didn't even know what boundaries was because in my generation, mm -hmm. there were no boundaries. You did what your parents told you to do when you was young. And when you got old and your parents got on your nerves, you did it anyway yep. because they was your parents. So you just suck it up. And because you took it. I said so. Right. And, and even when they're <laughs> older, you, you still have that sense of, um, you know, respect. Mm -hmm. And that, that's our generation. Mm -hmm. That, you know, your parents take care of you when you're young. When they get older, you give them the respect, you know. That they need, and so I didn't have any idea what you all meant by boundary. I'm like, what are you talking about boundary? Mm -hmm. So that was a learning experience. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> from that conversation in Starbucks and started Target that one time, we walked away with the code word, which is basically if we are crossing, if, if me or her are crossing each other's boundaries, we say what code. <laughs> and that's it. It's understood that okay, you done took it too far you know, bring it back in, uh, find your place and stay there. <laughs> yeah. So I think that has really been helping um, us communicate and just like respect where each other both are within our own journeys. And so and why understanding do you think that it's not, not necessarily the journey we may want for each other. Yes. Respecting that. It may not be the journey we want for each other, but we have to respect that journey because it's their journey that they choose to take. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the best way for us to be there is just to be there it's right. to, to support them. Right. It's to be present. Right. I think so. So why is it important, Ma, do you think for, for mother daughters who um, are navigating that like transition from being teenagers or like young adults to like adults um, to have like cold words or to just communicate, I guess, better? I think because as as mothers, we still see our children as children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like, cause until you have those conversations, until, and even if your daughter or your, your child doesn't come to you to have the conversation, what I've learned is we should have the conversation with them. We should open the door. If they don't, by like 21, 22 years old, they got some stuff. Every family got some stuff. Every childhood mm -hmm. got some stuff. Mm -hmm. Everyone. But like in my generation, we just took it. We, you know, we just took it. We never talked about yeah, it. It was normal. Something out of the road. And but in this generation, they like cancel by yeah. instead of really dealing with it. So um for me, I think is understanding that they are no longer your child. That they are transitioning. I mean child, child. child. Okay. They're no longer <laughs> a child. They're always yeah. gonna be your child, mm -hmm. but they're not a child. Right, right. They right. are an adult child. And so you have to be able as a parent to transition yourself mm -hmm. from them, them not being your child, not doing what you want them to do when you want them to do it, to asking, mm -hmm. you know, and, and being able when they tell us no, to understand no means no. Yeah, I think it's the same thing for adult child. See, we have to remember like that we are adults and not children. Like. You are always going to be our mom. Like you'll always be my mom, but our relationship has changed. And so there are certain things that, you know, I can bring to you and certain things that I can't bring to you. Right. And, and I have to understand that right. as an adult, not necessarily a child. Right. But now as, <laughs> as, a, as a mother, a mother always knows mm -hmm. there's a sixth sense 
I mean, I don't know this. A mother always knows when something is not right with their child. Mm -hmm. You just have that sixth sense. So for a mother, and I, and I hope that, you know, young adults or adult children can respect this. Your parent knows. They, they just have an instinct when something's wrong. Mm -hmm. And so when they call you or they ask, is everything okay? And you say, yeah, everything is okay. They know everything is not okay. Mm -hmm. So that may be a good time where you could say no, but code. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever that code word is, no, things aren't okay, mom. I'm all right, you know, physically and all of that. But I'm going through some stuff in code. Whatever that code word is, which means now you call me, you reassured me that yes, I'm right. My instinct is right. Something's not right. Mm -hmm. Now I know I need to go pray for my child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the boundaries that y'all have set for us, we also have boundaries because the roles turn. And so, you know, don't be coming to me treating me like a child. You That's know, true. like the table's That's turn, true. and it's like. You don't need to be doing this, and you need to do that. You got to do this, so yeah. And that's I, where code comes in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think parents also, mothers specifically, need to be able to communicate what their boundaries are too, because sometimes it just shows up passive aggressively, yeah. or it's just like, yeah, hmm, like stone. We like, shut down. No, yeah, it's like we need hello, help. Like what's up? What's wrong? We fear. We, we, fear, we fear that y'all are gonna be like chastisers. Yeah. It's a or, or you may feel like you aren't what? Well, I don't know. I don't no, we fear life. we fear that if we say something because it's of it's, the society right now, like yeah, it's like it's yeah. If we say something you. it's eggshells. Yeah. Well we in this together, girl, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the end of episode one of Healing Together or Here Together. We'll find a word, a, a title sooner or later. But um, I hope that you all were strengthened in some kind of way from this first episode, encouraged and challenged even um, to have those conversations with either your daughter or your mother because in our black community, it's needed. Communicate, don't X communicate. All right, so. Uh, I think we should close out with a word of prayer and then y'all have a great evening so or day whenever you may be watching it. So let us pray. Lord, we pray that this conversation, that this dialogue between mother and daughter was helpful for someone. We pray that whoever the person is watching this YouTube video and series will feel strengthened, will feel encouraged, will feel more inclined and have more insight to go there and have those kind of conversations while they may be crucial and they may be upsetting and hurtful they're needed lord god we're building stronger families and stronger personal well-being and so we pray that each and every person that hears our voices with the weeks to come and the videos to come will be strengthened to go there lord god and to be with you as you travel with them so strengthen them lord god give them the courage give them the boldness give them what they need to get through and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen.